Hello, my name is Leah. Today I am starting a very exciting vlog because I'm going to be making my way through Story Genius by Lisa Crone and reading what she has to say about story and doing all of her exercises to help me plan my next book. Some backstory. I'm a part of a Discord group hosted by Caitlin Ergo. I will leave that link down below if you would like to join us. We have a good time over there. One of the members of that Discord, Danica Gray, also an author tuber, I will leave her stuff linked down below as well. She recently picked up Story Genius and started spreading the word. And because of Danica, I feel like basically every person in that discord has picked up story genius they have all spoken so highly of this book and also that it has torn all of their plans to shreds that i thought it was necessary for me to pick it up as well i went ahead and read the intro just out of curiosity and it sort of introduces lisa crone's philosophy when it comes to storytelling she talks about how story isn't just for entertainment it's something that we have ingrained in our biology. And that story is literally how we learn to survive socially. I found that a very interesting introduction. The core of it boiled down to how stories about an internal struggle rather than an external struggle. It's not just a series of plot events, which I feel like I have gotten from other craft books. Like that's something that I know to be true about story, but I liked her kind of twist on that perspective, if that makes sense. So I'm very excited to jump into this. I am scared and looking forward to seeing what sort of exercises that she has me do. This book is geared towards pre-writing, essentially. She doesn't call it pre-writing because she says that all of this work that you're doing on the front end is the book, basically. But this is not a book about plotting your story, setting up the beats right, setting up the character arcs, all of that kind of stuff. This is a book about planning a book. Sorry that's such a long intro. Today is June 10th. As I said, I've already read the introduction to this and a little bit of chapter one actually. It's about 2.30 and I just recently finished my client work for today. So I thought that now would be a good time to go ahead and jump in. I have no clue how long it's gonna take me to get through this book, how long it's going to take me to film this vlog of me working through this. So I have no plan for when this video is going to be uploaded yet, but we're just gonna jump right in. Okay, so I just finished part one, about to move on to part two, um, but I wanted to check in real quick because I think this is exactly what I'm going to need for this book. Part one is basically about what a story is versus what a story isn't, and there's a bit where Lisa Crone talks about plotting versus pantsing as kind of the standard ways to create a story. And I'm not a pantser, but there's something that she said in the pantsing section that I was like, yes, this is it. Because she was talking about how whenever pantsers write their first draft, you know, it's the terrible first draft. We all have it, but pantsing tends to lend itself to a very directionless first draft, if that makes sense. So she said trying to shape it only makes it worse because there's nothing to shape. And that's exactly how I've felt trying to rewrite Project Fire. I feel like every time I sit down to kind of like work on a new outline or get some sort of direction of how I want to approach the rewrite, I just can't figure it out because it feels like what's there can't be shaped. Funnily enough though, her section on plotting didn't actually speak to me that much. She talks about how your typical story structure guides are all about the external, but I've personally always read all of those guys as being about the internal. They use external things to describe what happens internally. So that might that might just be me, but I can definitely see how like story structure guides kind of stray people away to the external rather than the internal. Anyways, I just kind of wanted to check in to say that part two is creating the inside story. So I think this is the part where we start talking about how to figure out what the story is about basically and doing writing exercises and stuff. Hello. 
Hello, so we are in a similar situation as yesterday where I finished my client work a little bit early. I've gotten through the first five chapters. I think chapters three through five were the ones with exercises. They have really helped me kind of narrow in on my focus. So far, we are talking about kind of the what if premise and then combining that with the purpose of why you want to tell this story. And then from that gathering what your char main character is like, flaw and goal and all that kind of stuff is. So I already had most of that kind of nailed down for this. I think that that why is why I feel like Project Fire has a bit more soul in it than Project Shadows does. So I feel like that why is already pretty solid. But despite that, there has been stuff that I've come up with that's new in terms of clarifying my character's goal. I, I don't know, was able to be a bit more specific in this. We're making some good progress and I'm excited to jump back in today. Chapter six, I think, had to do with worldview. So I think we're going to start delving into the main character's perspective a lot more, which is exciting. It's a refreshing read for sure. So today I think is the 23rd. I'm not entirely sure, but it's Wednesday. It's been a hot second since the last time that I worked on story genius prep work and the last time that I updated you. I have made it through chapter six, which is the origin scene. So essentially, this is the step in the process where we kind of start digging into the character's backstory a little bit more. We're thinking about a moment in the past that solidified what the character's misbelief is. And then instead of just like noting that in our brains, we're actually writing it out as a scene. So that's what I have been working on and that's what I'm about to jump back into today. My origin scene is kind of a two-parter. Um, there's two scenes, but it's all kind of one moment where this misbelief gets solidified in my main character's mind. I feel like this part is really interesting and fun for me because I hadn't really thought in this level of detail about my character's past, but something that Lisa Crohn says in the book is story is about context and the story has no meaning outside of the context of the character's life. That's part of the whole point is exploring how this character relates to the world, exploring how they grow throughout the narrative and what the story says about life. You can't really do that without having a starting point, a context. The character doesn't just like spring forth on page one. They have a history and that history is what informs every word they say, every decision they make throughout the course of the story. Which to an extent I kind of already was thinking about but I'm very much the kind of person that I like to be efficient with my writing. I like none of my work to go to waste and so the idea of spending so much time working on character backstory or even writing a scene has never really crossed my mind as an option. I know people do it, but it's never something I've had the desire to try just because that work isn't going in the book. So why would I write it? But since I am giving this book's method a try, um, I'm going to be finishing the origin scene today. And I believe there are even more backstory scenes that we need to be writing. So. That's just how it's gotta be. The point though is that it's not that this work is going to waste because even if those words specifically aren't in the book, the character work that I'm doing here definitely will be. Again, it is now, what time is it? 12.25 and I'm finished writing my origin scene or at least the first draft of it. I think for now, I'm gonna take a look at chapter seven, maybe start reading chapter seven and seeing kind of what's coming next. If it's something that I can work on today, I'll do that. If it's something that I need to wait until I'm done with the origin scene to work on, then I'll work on it like tomorrow or Friday or something like that. Hello, I am back in a seemingly unfamiliar background, but that is because my husband and I finally rearranged our apartment into an actually reasonable layout because before it didn't make any sense. So now I am sitting in the living room, which is actually in the living room. Wow, crazy concept. But I came to give a little update because I have finished chapter seven of Story Genius. And oh my goodness, that one took 
so long. I talked about the origin scene being kind of the moment where the protagonist's misbelief is solidified in their mind. So I finished that, did a little bit of editing, refining on that, and then I moved on to chapter seven, which is about moments in the protagonist's life where that misbelief was proven correct or moments where they just dug deeper into their misbelief philosophy. For me, my protagonist is an incredibly stubborn, independent girl. So her origin scene had to do with her learning the lesson of the only person she can truly rely upon is herself. In the end of that, her father ended up leaving. And even though she doesn't really recognize that that's something that hurt her significantly, like throughout her childhood, she still kind of idolizes her father to an extent that moment just hit her hard so my chapter seven scenes were all about moments where my main character thinks that she has the right belief and it seems like life is proving her right. So the first one is a moment where it looks like her mom might be trying to get rid of her or leave her as well when in reality her mom's just trying to do what she thinks is best for her. But because she already has that misbelief, she kind of jumps to a conclusion and ruins a situation for herself, even though she thinks she comes out on top in the end. The second one has to do with a first crush, you know, those formative years. She starts to get close to a boy and when she realizes that that gives him a bit of power over her, she's like, mm, nah, I don't like that. And then she just pieces out of the situation. And then the third one is about a time where she's kind of putting the pieces together and realizing that something's not really right with her life. Instead of thinking inwardly about what she's doing wrong, she thinks that there's an external thing that's wrong with her life. She thinks that it's this city she lives in. If she could only return home to the place where she grew up, then she could finally earn her independence. And this scene also kind of sets up how she got to what she's doing for money. At the beginning of the novel, she's a ring fighter. And so I kind of plant the initiation of that as well as a way to protect and defend herself. <sighs> so because I had to write three whole scenes for that chapter's exercises, it's taken me a hot second to get through chapter seven, but we're moving on to chapter eight. I'm still really liking the Lisa Crone method. I'm still feeling a little bit of what I talked about before, about how a lot of this feels like it's a waste of time, but also I know it's not because it's doing important character work. All three of these moments that I did for chapter seven, absolutely were not in my mind before this. I had to come up with these moments for the sake of doing the exercise. And it definitely has, I think, given me a deeper and a richer understanding of where my main character has come from. We'll see how it pays off when I actually start writing the story, which it sounds like chapter eight might be about figuring out where your novel starts because it's titled The Win, an offer your protagonist can't refuse, but probably wants to. <laughs> Hello, I'm back again. Today is Thursday, July 9th, I believe. We're into Camp Nano, so I'm starting to feel the pressure on getting my work through of Story Genius finished, but I don't want to rush anything just because we're here, and I also don't want to skip over any steps just to try to like hurry the process along. So I finished writing the opening scene, and I liked what I had before. I just basically clarified it a bit, which there's actually one more thing I thought of yesterday that I wanna change about the opening scene because I have this sort of metaphor in there. We're in like a fighting ring in the first scene. And so there's kind of this discussion about blood and power. I like what I did there. It sounds nice. It sets the atmosphere really well, but it doesn't super clearly tie into the theme. My main character's biggest like misbelief is that she has to only rely on herself, that sacrificing things for others is the same as them like taking them from you. You're giving up a part of yourself for the sake of someone else who probably won't repay that. That's essentially giving them power over you. So there's some stuff about power in there, but it also has to do with like trust and vulnerability. And so I kind of had this clicky moment where I was like, okay, so the, the blood isn't just like something that fuels the fighter. It's not something that gives them power. It's kind of like an embarrassing, almost like vulnerable thing, which feels 
interesting in a fight setting, I feel like, but I think that's how my main character would see it. She would see bleeding in a fight similarly to how she sees being vulnerable in a relationship. So that's fun. I'm gonna go in and kind of shift some of that and then I'm also working on my ending scene so far which is difficult. <laughs> It's difficult to write the end when you haven't even written the building blocks that get you there. There's a lot of things that are somewhat vague. There's some dialogue that comes off as cheesy. I feel like I'm working off of nothing whenever I'm writing this, but I do like what I have so far. Like when I first started, I was kind of like, this is, this is not working out well. But then as I wrote, I kind of like discovered some new things about the scene that I could include. I'm almost done with it. I'm not quite done but I'm excited to jump back in and kind of get that all settled. That's what I was working on yesterday and I skipped ahead to kind of read and start working on the next chapter just because I needed a break. So I moved on to chapter 12, which is all about getting organized and getting prepared to start your blueprint. Basically, she wants you to create these certain amount of folders um, regardless of where you do your work. So I did that in Scrivener because that's where I like to write most of my novels and I feel like that's a great place to stay organized like that. So today's job, finish the final scene and finish creating the scene cards for the stuff that I already know about the story. Hello again, today is Friday, July the 9th. Here's the thing, I said yesterday that I was going to work on my finale scene. I definitely did not end up doing that and actually spent pretty much the whole day kind of outlining. I don't know really what to call it. I was using the story genius method of creating scene cards. I started making some of those for the scenes that I knew and that kind of devolved into me throwing that method out the window and also trying out Brandon Sanderson's method of outlining a little bit, which is something that I saw him talk about in his writing for science fiction and fantasy class that he posted, the updated one for 2020, where basically he writes down the different plot archetypes that exist within the book and then lists all the steps that need to happen or the beats that need to happen within those plot archetypes. So for example, one of mine is a tournament and so I basically listed the stuff that needs to happen throughout, like the initial training, the first task, the forming of allies and enemies, strategy, all that kind of stuff. Those different things that will become scenes, I kind of just listed those out throughout. I also thought back to the video that Lizelle Sambury posted about the fun and games section and the way that she goes about plotting subplots. And I found that super helpful. It really just helped clarify what needs to be done for certain subplots. And part of my issue with my original zero draft of this book is that the first half of the book isn't smooth, but like it has a flow to it that the second part of the book just absolutely does not have. I ran out of things to write about like halfway through and I didn't know where to take the story from there. My midpoint was a moment that really just yanks the rug out from under my main character. She loses pretty much all of the allies that she's made, like she's on her own. And it was really hard for me to figure out how to write the second half of the book when she's not really coming into contact with other people where there's not like a give and take conflict it's just her trying to make her way through this tournament and so like solve this question that she has and it's just boring whenever it's just a character going from place to place doing stuff so because of the way that Lizelle Sambury talks about the fun and game section. I kind of applied that to the bad guys close in section as well and was able to kind of solidify what my subplots actually were for each section, which ones go across the midpoint and cover both, which ones kind of wrap up in either section. And I was also able to kind of balance the plot arcs in terms of some being like a downward path while others are an upward path. So there's certain things that are going right, but other things that are going very wrong and I think I'm at a place where what I have makes sense and then I took those subplots and listed all the steps that need to happen 
throughout the way that Brandon Sanderson does. I strayed from the story genius way, but the scene cards just weren't really working for me. I need to see things at a bigger picture first. And the fact that the scene cards were all like separate documents, it just wasn't clicking in my brain. I believe I need to skip ahead in the book to see actually where this is going because that will, you know, kind of determine what I do. But I believe her method is to get all of what you know into the scene cards. And then, you know, as you're writing and you come up with new ideas, you can add that. But that you only really outline like five chapters in advance or five scenes in advance. And then as you go along, you kind of outline as you go, which feels weird to me. And I feel like if this was a completely new story in my brain, I would feel very intimidated by that and not be able to do that at all. But because I'm familiar with the story enough and I know enough about the story, I feel like I could actually try that for this book. Also, she has you, whenever you get to a part where you're like, dang it, I needed to have set this up earlier, you go back and you set it up so that by the time you finish it all is cohesive which is also not a way that I've written before I've kind of taken the approach of I'll keep going and then on my revision I'll make sure that I set those things up correctly which makes sense in some ways but I know that I can finish a book at this point and I know I'm not going to get stuck in an editing loop like I used to so I feel comfortable enough to try that edit as you go sort of method I've made it through the entire book of story genius. The last little bit of the book I didn't vlog much for as I was going through it because I actually finished the last few chapters all in one day and didn't end up doing a lot of the exercises that it had at the end of those chapters, mainly because I had already done them basically in the other thinking and plotting and writing that I've done on this story I already knew the answers to those questions and so I didn't feel the need to sit down and actually go through some of those exercises basically after we got through the part of writing the opening scene and the ending scene it was time to start thinking about the blueprint, digging into side plots a little bit more. Because this is geared toward starting a story from scratch, starting it from just the inkling of an idea that you have, I think that is a wonderful moment to actually start thinking about side plots. But I had already done that. I already knew exactly what my side plots were going to be and without really realizing it, I was already working through a lot of that stuff in that clip where I talked about how I strayed from the story genius method a bit to dip into Brandon Sanderson's writing or outlining style and the Lizelle Sambury video. I was already kind of thinking of subplots. And so as I was going through that and as I was making that bullet pointed list of what all needs to be covered within the main arc with different characters. I had already done the work at the end of the book without really realizing it. So I basically just read through to the end just to get an idea of what the process would be. And then I said it was time to start writing, which is what I have been doing for the past about week. I'm about 10,000 words in so far and I am loving it. I am so glad that I went through the story genius method as wasteful of time as some of it felt with how long it took to write some of those backstory scenes. I know with certainty, especially now that I'm getting into the actual drafting, that work is absolutely not going to be wasted. Which I think is Lisa Crone's point through all of this is that in order to write a story and write a character's arc in that story, you really have to know specifics about their past because that's what they're going to be thinking about. That's what they're going to be checking their current life against. They're going to be seeing how those two things compare, using their past to inform the decisions that they make. And overall, I think going through this process has given me a much deeper understanding of the specifics about my character's past. So do I recommend the Story Genius Method book? Absolutely. I'm definitely going to be picking it up again and I'm really interested to see how the exercises and the method plays out with a story that is actually a new idea. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and that it kind of gave you an idea of the story genius process and how it worked for me. Let me know in the comments if you have read this book, how you liked it, how it worked for you in developing your story, or if you haven't, let me know how that process goes for you. Do you do any pre-writing? Are you a plotter or play pantser? What sort of resources do you turn to 
for that kind of story development phase of novel writing? I would love to know. But that is all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye.